welcome to the Programmatic Digest podcast, a weekly roundup of top programmatic news with fellow programmatic ninjas. I'm your host, Ellen Parker, your very own programmatic sensei. Thank you for joining us today. Before we get into today's conversation, subscribe, like, and share. Leave us a comment. If you need any more details, visit our website, programmaticdigest.com, programmaticdigest.com, where you'll be prompted for our new weekly or monthly newsletter. It only alerts you when there's a new episode live. So thank you so much for all your support and love. And remember to be curious. Enjoy the conversation. Hi, Catherine. Hey, how are you doing? I am so excited about today's conversation. We're excited to have you on. So thank you for making the time and welcome to the Sunset's Corner. Thank you so much. I'm really, really happy to be here today and talk about all things DTV. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Before we get into that conversation, do you mind introducing yourself, um, letting us know what you do at Spotify, how you got there and anything fun we want to know? Yeah, certainly. So I'll start with a little fun fact. I am living in Brooklyn and I am the oh. mother of twins, boy okay. girl twins. <laughs> um, and I've been working at SpotX for about two years. So I'm the regional vice president. I'm managing a team who oversee all of the East Coast media owner relationships. So the majority of that team is doing platform services management. So really like an account management, really a strategic role working with media owners. And then one person on my team is doing the new business. So any kind of contracts and new media owners coming onto our platform. Uh, prior to that, I was at Rubicon Project, now Magnite for over seven years. I was there in the London market as well as in New York. Um, and funnily enough, they've acquired SpotX recently. So full circle. Yes, indeed. Um, that is pretty we, So we had Gabriel Cohen on the podcast, I think, a few episodes ago, so maybe a couple months ago. And it was right during that time. And he did say, hey, by the way, we were just acquired by Mike Knight. And I had just saw that in the news maybe a couple days prior. So it was really cool that this was happening. Um, so let's, which is a great segue into today's conversation. So we're going to talk about CTV guys. If you haven't heard that enough, (laughs) um, we're going to talk about connected TV streaming, uh, consumer, the streaming consumer, and then we'll shift a little bit and talk about, uh, diversity and inclusion and how SpotX is, um, handling things internally. But also I know that you wanted to talk specifically about, um, uh, I believe an article. So. We'll get that into that a little bit later during the podcast. But first and for first and foremost. <laughs> yeah. OK, so a lot of things has happened in the last uh, year and a half. For those who don't know, we had a whole pandemic happen. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> 2020 was like a blur to me because I was a new time mom. Like my kid is one year old now. So like her first year was during the pandemic. So it was like a blur. But yeah. for other people who actually did go on and living their best life, um, Give us a quick uh, or just give us a little bit of our, where Connected TV stands as of today in May 2021. Yeah, absolutely. So can't go through the story of the last <laughs> year, year and a half, two years without acknowledging the pandemic. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And how that did absolutely accelerate the eyeballs going to Connected Television of course, with everyone being home, I think it was a time where a lot of consumers, a lot of viewers mm-hmm. were interested in being experimental. So it's actually a funny one. I think there's a stat out there that uh, connected televisions or new TVs was one of the number <laughs> one things that Americans bought with stimulus checks. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think <laughs> off of the back of that, we certainly saw a rise in viewership trends. Um, and of course, everyone speaks to, I think, a lot of the SVOD, so like the Netflixes of mm-hmm. the world. But really, it's been a huge, huge jump in AVOD. And that's where SpotX, now owned by Magnite, really fits in. So and automating I'm, the buying and selling of that ad-funded uh, gotcha. video on demand, but also streaming. So what you said AVOD, what does that stand for? Sure. Advertising on video on demand. So, okay. So anything like the Netflix, like the Amazon Prime, the Roku would be con- considered an AVOD or... Yes, certainly. Those would be okay. considered AVOD. Oh, okay. uh, we also, and I have it in my background here. It's a little hard to see, mm-hmm. uh, but like a Samsung, Samsung TVs, they'll have natively within their software, a channel guide. So Samsung TV plus, for example, yeah. uh, it mirrors traditional linear in its experience. Um, and that's also ad funded. 
Yeah. Okay. So we have a Sony and I think we have a, oh, darn. It's in my bedroom and I look at it almost every day. I'm in a Maybe watch. LG? I think it's an LG. <laughs> LGs are really like a growing uh, manufacturer. <laughs> in the space, so it could be an yeah. LG. I think it's LG because I think what Gabriel was saying is that it was just acquired by you guys. Or I mean, uh, the partnership was just started around that time two months ago. So I'm going to say it was LG. Um, but okay. So so that that makes sense. I think you sent me a really cool stat that said like in 2018, average daily CTV viewing in the US was like 46 minutes. And today it's three hours, three whole hours. Y'all are watching three hours a day of streaming. Yeah, absolutely. It's an affluent audience. It's a young audience. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, half of the viewing of young adults. So that's like 13 to 34 age okay. demographic. Mm-hmm. is done on connected televisions or through a streaming device. So I think that it could be an interesting thing to talk about. Like, what is OTT versus mm-hmm. CTV? Okay. So over-the-top viewing. Mm-hmm. This can be, you know, content, like full episode content. Let's use The Walking Dead on AMC as an mm-hmm. example. Um, they're a client and someone I work really closely with. So you can watch The Walking Dead on your desktop, you know, just on your laptop. Yeah. You can work on a phone um, or a tablet or a smart TV, a streaming device, a gaming console, like a PlayStation, as an example. All of these are connected devices, but what's considered CTV is the smart TV, streaming devices, gaming consoles, really that big lean back experience, the living room type of experience. But over the top would also be inclusive of phones, tablets, desktops. I mean, got it. So, okay, so... It makes sense um, because a few years back, maybe I'm going to say four or five years ago, e-marketers was projecting that board cutters was going to increase above 50 percent. Not sure if that's the case right now, Um, but I would assume that it's pretty high. Most of us are cord cutters at this point. Do you think that in the next, can we project that TV will disappear? Or if not, when <laughs> do, you think, do you think that cord cutters are going to continue one increasing? And if so, when do you, what, what is that, that line where it'll stop increasing because TV is still like there? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a really interesting thing to ponder. Mm-hmm. So what I think is going to be a hybrid future where you have connected television, but you also have addressability on traditional set top boxes. Mm -hmm. So addressability being defined as you're able to target households or individuals, though it might not be a true connected television where they have hardware embedded and it's Mm -hmm. based on Wi-Fi. There's a lot of advances in how we're able to target users that are still using traditional set-top boxes. Those boxes are actually getting smarter. There are a lot of new iterations of set-top boxes. So as I look to the future, I think that's going to be a really big and growing sector. Um, and it's all programmatically transacted. I mean, maybe not all, but there's the capability for yeah. it to be programmatically transacted to be able to cherry pick the audiences that you're most interested in. Yeah. Uh, so I, as where you were talking, uh, we quickly looked it up. It was on the e-marketers. So it did say 2019. And 2024. And again, anything we discussed today, we'll, I'll make sure to add in the show notes um, on the website and you'll be able to have access to all of this discussion points. Um, but US Ford Cutters household from 2019 to 2024, and this is on eMarketers, and it was uh, from September 2020. And it said that, let me see, 35.4% of households are cord cutters. So that represents 46 million, I believe. Let me see if that's what it says over here. Yeah, pay pay TV household are those with a subscription to traditional pay TV services, excluding IPTV and pure play online video services like Hulu, Netflix, non-pay TV, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So so we're not yet in the 50%. I would that's what I was trying to answer my question. So I think that's a good segue into our next uh conversation, uh addressable TV. Um so so what what's that? What's that? Yeah, certainly. So the idea that you can target mm-hmm. individuals or households, like I had mentioned before, and you can do so at the glass level, you can do so across traditional set top boxes. Mm-hmm. It's really interesting. And we're seeing a lot of things, a lot of new consortiums come out okay. um, with regard to the addressable landscape. 
mm-hmm. um, project or is one example. Canoe is another example. Um, we're really seeing a, a large interest in the idea that you could programmatically target households or individuals across really the traditional TV. So the live TV landscape. Okay. So that's definitely been been a really big area of interest. Um, it, it's all about the shift of eyeballs, though. And I know that just your last point about eMarketer, I wanted to make yeah. a comment there. Mm-hmm. Um, we've been saying this for a few years now, like we as an overarching yeah. advertising industry, that there is a disproportionate amount of eyeballs or viewers that are watching connected TV or really just OTT over the top content mm-hmm. through some kind of an internet, internet pardon me, connected device. Mm-hmm. So it's been kind of waiting for the ad spend to catch up to those eyeballs. Mm. Uh, and I do not think we're there yet, but I do think that things are certainly trending in that direction. So an example of that would be if you're thinking of the upfront, the traditional upfront, and then moving to the new fronts. And now the IAB, you know, having these digitally centric upfronts and upfront dollars being spent in part programmatically. Yeah. Um, we're seeing a huge shift now. Absolutely just bringing it full circle, accelerated by the pandemic. And Mm -hmm. I'm going to quote a couple of stats, a lot of stats, and I'll send you the link, um, are really from material. Well, they're from market research, like from eMarketer, from many different sources, Mm -hmm. but that has been collected and brought together by some SpotX team members. We love stats here. Yeah, okay, good. I'll give you some stats. (laughs) There's a 2021 um, video trends. Um, that I can link, and there's also a CTV is for everyone. Yeah, uh, that'll be paper great. that we can share uh, with the audience here, and it talks to a lot of stats and a lot of specifics around the audience, um, like teaser being young, being affluent, being tech yeah. savvy, um, and kids. being quite I mean, large. <laughs> I mean, I think the last year has pushed that audience to stream a little bit more. And then at first, I was like, oh well. You know how you see on, on social media, the memes that say, back in the days, we used to spend a whole day outside. And I'm like, well, back in the days, we didn't have a pandemic and you didn't, we were not secluded for safety reasons and healthcare reasons. And so I really feel that for that next generation, because I feel like even if, even though it's a whole year out of their years of yeah. living on this earth, that they are, they, they live in a pandemic, I think that year is going to have so much consequences. And they're going to make that we're, we're going to talk about different type of buyers like in a few years from now, like this generation is going to be more likely to, like you said, stream services or um, yeah. not like ha- they're going to be more likely to like attend a, con- a concert and pay top dollar to have a VIP ex- experience virtually. I really think that that last year has shifted like it's going to redefine, like we're going to talk about those buyers in a very different way. And we're already targeting them in a different way. It's definitely interesting. Um, my first thought there was about playing outside and it might've been me yeah. growing up in the New York suburbs. Um, but I was definitely watching a ton of VHSs growing up. I think you <laughs> remember watching The Little Mermaid and then watching it on backwards, like in slow motion when you were finding it. So I would almost argue, and again, this may just be me um, compared to my children, but yeah. whereas I was watching loads of VHSs, um, yeah. I think my kids are more so now watching like Moonbeam channel on the yeah. Samsung mm-hmm. TV in our living room. So I think perhaps that the format has changed and now it's more trackable. I mean, it's almost like um, if you're looking at a panel that you've surveyed for how much TV did your kids watch in the early 90s, I'm sure (laughs) that people were uh, not necessarily saying as much of it as it maybe was with all those VHSs. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, I used to have the stacks and stacks, all my yeah, friends. Yeah, we did too. Did, right? we did it was too. like a furniture item in people's houses for all your VHS. Yeah, it's legit. <laughs> and my husband, a few years back, my husband went to every single dollar store or whatever, the, the consignment store to collect them. So we have all of them in VHS is in a chest somewhere in the man cave. And, and uh, <laughs> I'm just like, so you just collected them to and leave them be there? Time <laughs> Can I put but... it up? Yeah. I do. My argument would be, I think we've always been consuming content yeah, one right. way or another, even as children. It's just the form has changed and now it's easier to track, you know, mm-hmm. some of these stats than maybe it wasn't right. like in the mm-hmm. past. And I think we've also done, you know, a good job in terms of protecting children with like a COPA compliance as one example. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, we were done. I think we're done a good job. There's still a lot of, a lot of work to do, but I believe that there's a, we're in a much better place. So 
Um, I didn't get to address some of those those kind of stats that I was touting before. Oh yeah, so sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, no, no worries. I'm just I'm kind of excited because I think it's you know it's one thing to say there has been explosive growth, mm-hmm. and there's one thing to truly be illustrative with the staff. Okay. So you know it's been blasted everywhere. COVID accelerated this, but yet there's still just right. a disproportionate amount of eyeballs and ad spend. Yeah. But yeah. I'm looking at a stat that's talking about um, March to October. So this is just like the height of the the pandemic. People at home on lockdown orders in 2020, and it was 800 percent growth in nice. ad opportunities on the device manufacturers. So again. The device manufacturers you were talking about having an LG TV, perhaps, or a Hisense TV, or yeah. Samsung TV, mm-hmm. um, and I understand, you know, some of that is due to those lockdowns. But there's a lot of speculation, and I think we're already seeing early stats to support the idea that yeah. this has changed the way that some people are consuming media. Right? They had that time to really experiment and say. I want to watch Jumanji too. I'm just going to type in Jumanji on the search function <laughs> native to my device yeah. um, and then see where it's available. If it's available, yeah. you know, Voodoo Walmart, am I going to choose to pay a certain amount of, of money off my credit card or am I willing to have a you know, small load of ads to fund that viewing experience? So uh, I think that it's, you know, CTV is certainly here to stay and that consumers have found ways like, to get the content they're after without having to continue to pay top dollar. I think and this is also, it's not just, you know, the pandemic and viewing habits, but things like GDPR mm-hmm. being the forefront of the press across Europe. Yeah. Um, we're seeing that consumers are increasingly more aware of the value exchange, right? Nothing's free. So truly free, right? You need to pay in your attention or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think now that that has come more so to the forefront uh, of viewers or consumers minds um and studies i should try to link some um after we do this but studies have shown that they're more tolerant um and interested in leading yeah. ads yeah 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 i mean uh traditional tv has shaped us has trained us to deal through the 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 tv ads or the tv commercials and some of them are just oh my god <laughs> but the ad breaks are a lot lighter um now they are the ad funded services, not for traditional TV, but speaking to connected TV. Oh, connected TV, yeah. And then yeah. I like I appreciate when there's like um like sometime on the top of the the screen, it'll tell you like, oh, there's two minutes left of ads, or I'll say okay. uh, one out of the six or one out of the five. So the countdown, I, yeah, the <laughs> countdown. I'm like, okay, just two minutes is fine. I have time to get up and go get some water or something. Mm-hmm. So um, so I appreciate that for sure. So let's shift into our um, our next topic here, because I know we wanted to highlight some diversity and inclusion. Um, And you shared an article and again about parents and caregivers. Right. Is that what you wanted to highlight? Yeah. Yeah, certainly. I mean, I I think that I did want to share, you know, there's there's been a lot of M&A. There's been consolidation in the space. The space is booming. It's okay. a super exciting to be here. I mean, not just looking through the lens of what the trends of viewership are, but mm-hmm. the way that we're transacting in a programmatic basis to reach these audiences. So we already said upfront, moving to maybe a programmatic guaranteed mm-hmm. execution when we're talking about at- operationally, how are these trends being transacted programmatically? How is data being layered on to make some of these executions truly addressable? How are you finding that end user, that household. Um, so really like the intersection of data, of addressability. Um, of course, who could talk about the trends without the rise of header bidding and, and what that means when there are fewer partners, right? If you think of consolidation, yeah. CTV is very much deals driven mm-hmm. versus open exchange. So when we talk about header bidding, it's more about how are we competing direct sold and programmatic? How are we making sure that we're able to de so make sure the same ad pod doesn't have duplicated creatives there, mm-hmm. competitive separation. So with all of these really, really exciting things going on, mm-hmm. I think something that SpotX and Magnite and many of our peers in the space have done really well during this pandemic um, is foster the growth through focusing on their people, their top talent, their personnel. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know what? COVID hasn't been the only thing going on in this past year and a half. That's there true. That is true. A lot of a lot of other things going on, and I think it's a great time to be leaning into unity and diversity, inclusion, and equity, and supporting people, whether it's parents and caregivers mm-hmm. or or people who may be lonely during this time. 
Yeah, it's, it's tough. We don't we don't say it enough. I mean, I I'm very grateful. I'm I had my husband, and again, I had the the baby, so we were on like this new parent moon. But I know a lot of friends that live in the apartment in New York that are single, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just like I feel for them because they don't have nobody to you know that that other human interaction. So I can only imagine how how tough that was, but. I'm glad that you mentioned that the pandemic was not the only thing. There is a lot of social injustice that happened in the last year that we should definitely highlight. So um, you mentioned that SpotX is doing something um, to stay connected. So what else can you uh, share with us that um, maybe somebody could learn from as they're hearing this with their employees? Like maybe they can mimic what SpotX is doing or maybe an em- a manager listening can do that with our team? Yeah, certainly. I mean, I think it's been, uh, and I'm, I'm a manager, I think it's been a completely mm-hmm. new experience managing right. mm-hmm. after this pandemic. Mm-hmm. And it has added, you know, a whole new dimension, such a human, human element. I mean, for people to know you're in your home, my kids are on the other side of this wall. <laughs> you know, I'm actually working yeah. in my bedroom in Brooklyn, though you can't tell from the very clean background. Yeah. Um, so I think it's broken down really a lot of barriers and allowed for some of those more timely, vulnerable conversations. Mm-hmm. Um, I wrote, so you were mentioning um, an article, it was a SpotX blog post that yep. was advocating for resources, company resources, money and time to go toward the development of employee resource groups. So I'm specifically um, I'm in three of them, but um, I'm a co-chair of the employee resource group for parents and caregivers. Um, I host a fireside chat series on women in leadership, and we have a very large, robust, and involved uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion steering committee. Mm-hmm. Steering committee, pardon me. <laughs> um, so I think that just investing in those and having them be front of mind, either for your training team, for your leadership kind of round tables. It doesn't have to be just yeah. for human resources. I mean, I'm, a, I'm in the sales leadership org and I'm very involved in this. So I think like most important is recognizing that the way that we're working with each other has become a little bit more personal. Mm-hmm. Times have changed and maybe topics that would seem a little bit more taboo um, are now something that I'm happy to talk to my team and even my managers about, you know, things native to being a mother that perhaps I would have wanted to shy away from. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm now happy to to advocate for many of those issues near and dear to many of our hearts. So I'm just grateful that they've created an environment that, you know, keeps top talent really wanting to be there, keeps everyone committed to the business objectives because we're not ignoring the human side of what we're all going through. No, and, and we shouldn't. And that was the thing with the, my argument for working for myself today is yeah. that I've been very loyal to to the um, to agencies that I've worked with. Not all of them, of, of course, but um, at that time, working from home was was not even a, a, a negotiable. And it used to t- it used to be like mind blowing. I was just I, w- I didn't have a child. I just had a doggy. I consider myself mm-hmm. a fur mommy still, you know. And working from home was such a big deal. And now, like, look, <laughs> it is what it is. Like, some employees are not willing to go back anymore into work. So. Are you guys offering any type of um, options for employees? Do you think that you will be back in office? And if yes, is it going to be hybrid? Is it, Are you giving um, your team the choice of coming back hybrid? And if not, working from home, but attending? I don't know. How yeah, is that like, sure, sure there? That. I mean, it's definitely something that I'm talking to all of my clients and yeah. you know, industry friends about on a regular basis. The, when are people coming back? I think that people are starting to come back a little bit. Um, for SpotX, now part of Mac Night, it's going to be September is when we start hybrid. There gotcha. is no plan to have people in office five days a week. Certain roles will also be able to be, you know, depending on manager allowances, but will be um, more or less flexible with their time in the office. We're really still mm-hmm. fleshing out all of the details. Um, But absolutely, to your point, the expectations have changed from years past. Um, Me personally, and again, I'm in sales. I do not want to have the rest of my career behind Zoom. I really miss conferences. Yeah, I'm a mom, but I love business trips. Got to get that break. You know, mom's night out (laughs) combined with some work. Um, And I've made a lot of friends, truly, through the industry. So I might be one of those that um, does want to head into the office, uh, see some people and have some lunches. But, you know, maybe more like three days a week. Yeah, that is a good segue <laughs> into our closing uh, closing segments here. So 
what is one fun fact you can tell us um, about yourself? Yeah, certainly. Um, well, I was an expat abroad in London. I really love oh. that. Yeah, so I was doing sales kind of across EMEA on that uh-huh. Digiday circuit. Not to plug Digiday, but love Digiday conferences. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I think my fun fact would be uh, that I had been been living abroad, and I already yeah. spoiled my other really fun one that I have twins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that's a really cool one. Yeah, that's it. What are their names? Uh, Penny Lou and Calvin, and they are boy girl twins who are two and a half. So oh, very nice. lucky. Uh, between that and you know the CTV boom and the team and all of this uh, <laughs> other committees, I'm I'm very busy, but. I have oh a great support God. system. So, <laughs> so, uh, so, what is the last show you binged, binge watch, <laughs> or are you just watching? You may not be binge watching, but that you just watch. It has to be streaming, though. Oh yeah, I only. I'm a, of course, I'm a cord cutter. I do not pay for people. Three I only years watch ago, connected TV. <laughs> I only watch on the app. Um, <laughs> uh, I watch actually a lot of Discovery Plus. Oh, so I'm really interested in the multiple of shows. I know this is so cliche and momsy to say, but I love Chip and Joanna Gaines. Oh, yeah. Um, I love a lot of their HGTV content. So, yeah. you know, I, I watch a multitude um, of those shows. Um, yeah. Guilty as charged. <laughs> cool. Okay. So the last question I have is that if you had to give uh, an advice to yourself starting um, maybe many years ago, or let's say four or five uh-huh. years ago, what would you tell yourself? I would say, you know, keep putting yourself out there. And even if it seems uncomfortable, like accept those opportunities. You know, if someone asks you to write something, if someone asks you to present um, and also do favors for your friends in the industry and help each other out. I think some people that I've mentored, that's been a bone of contention of like, you know, someone reaches out to me on LinkedIn and asks for an introduction, like, but Uh they feel uncomfortable. I think that's part of what we all do as a network and as an industry. And if anyone reaches out to me for anything, for an intro, for advice, like be open to it and don't be afraid to ask other people would be my advice on that. That is such a great way to end this podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I know we're going to have you back because we had much more to talk about. Um, So thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. And if somebody wanted to reach out to you, a vendor or a client, how would they do that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, You can reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'm very very active on LinkedIn and it's Catherine Dale. Amazing. (laughs) Her information, her information will be in the show notes, uh, including her email and then her LinkedIn. So uh, you guys can, can check that out. Thank you so much. And I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Yeah, you too. Talk soon. Thanks again. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate your love and support. We hope you enjoyed the conversation. If you have any questions, feedback, or just simply want to say hi, email us at info at programmaticdigest.com. You can also visit the website, programmaticdigest.com, programmaticdigest.com, where we're always looking for guest hosts. We're always looking, we're also looking for sponsors. So hit us up if you're interested.